Susan Laurie Parks is here. She won this year's Pulitzer Prize for drama for her play, Top Dog, Underdog. She is the first ever African-American woman to receive the honor. Ben Brantley of the New York Times wrote, the play vibrates with the clamor of big ideas, audaciously and exuberantly expressed. She demonstrates that she can shape a captivating narrative without sacrificing her high thematic ambitions. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Brantley. Yeah, right. Uh, I am pleased to have her on this program, uh, and congratulations on the Pulitzer. Thank you so very much. Oh, Thank man. You. <laughs> yeah. It's a joy. It's been, it's been quite a crazy couple of weeks. Like I've what? Done. I mean, what's happened? Oh, I've done... Everybody, I've every friend to... you've ever had. It, well, that's, and that's the wonderful part, too, because there are a lot of friends that I went to college with, a lot of people whose numbers I've lost along the way, and everyone's calling me, and those who, who can't get through because my phone's always busy, I call them, you know, and it's, yeah. it's, it's really been a wonderful time. Some students came down from Mount Holyoke College where I went to school. We all hung out afterwards, so it's been, a, it's been like an extended family yeah. reunion, so it's really been great. You are not an overnight sensation. No, it's, well, it's been a long night. If I if I am, <laughs> if I am, it's been a real long night. Yeah, but um, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah tell me the bio of you. <laughs> what? From, well, you from, take from Mount Holyoke. And, you, no, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Exactly, Did exactly. you come out of Mount Holyoke saying I want to write? Oh, I want to write plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah plays. No, Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I started. I started writing plays in 1982, and I graduated from Mount Holyoke in 1985. Mm. So I had started, you know, on the road um, before I graduated. Um, I took a class with James Baldwin while I was enrolled at Mount Holyoke, and it was a creative writing class. And we sat around a table, yeah. kind of like this, except it was a rectangle. Yeah. And he sat at the head, and w there were 15 of us, three from each of the colleges in the Pioneer Valley, the five college consortium. And when I read my plays, I was, you know, I would always, you know, and then, and the character does it. I mean, it, they weren't plays, I'm sorry, let me say it. When I read my short stories, because yeah. I was writing short stories, and I was always very animated, and one day he said, have you ever thought about... Uh, plays. Exactly. <laughs> and I'd never thought about writing plays, really, yeah. and, but I started then, you know, I started writing plays then, so... Yeah, and, and, then and did, did you have a gift for it, you think? Then, then. I had, um... An instinct? Uh, uh, did characters come alive? Could you think yeah, dialogue like... Char well, characters did come alive for me, and that's why when I read for my own work, I would be so, you know, I, the characters on the page that I had written would inspire yeah. me so completely. But, you know... But you've been writing about 10 or 15 years. Uh, 1982 is... 82 is, is yeah, that's 20, 20 years. years. Yeah. Um, that's only plays. I was writing short stories and working on, like, a novel and stuff before then. What's this play about? Hmm. How did it start? I mean, what about these two characters? It's about these two brothers whose names are Lincoln and Booth, yeah. whose father named them Lincoln and Booth uh, as a joke. And Lincoln, the older John brother, Booth and Abraham, Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, but they're, these guys' names are just Lincoln and Booth, mm. you know. Yeah. I don't know their last name, actually, yeah. which is, you know. You don't? Never thought about it. Never gave my last name? Mm, they never told it to yeah. me. Maybe it's... No, they Smith. never told you. Characters no. tell you. Oh, sure, sure. No, I don't give. I mean, if you give... It's like if you give someone a piece of clothing, you know, oh, they might say thank you, but they won't wear it. You yeah. know, it's not right, so... So Lincoln would, say, Lincoln would have said to you, my name is Lincoln... Lincoln Jones. Jones. Jones, yeah. You know, they, no, they never said their last names um, to me. Um, but, um... So what did you start with? Um... Oh, I know this play. Lincoln and Booth, they're brothers. Bun a bump. Bun a bump. Yeah. Where does bun a bump go? Well, right. So then you sit down and you say, oh, Well, I don't know. And then, well, the whole thing about three card Monty, which yeah. is another aspect. Lincoln of plays three card Monty. Lincoln used to be a great three card Monty hustler. Right. And has given it up because mm -hmm. um, something in him one day said, This is not good for me. This is going to lead somewhere bad for me. So he gave it up. He swore off the cards and took a job in an arcade as a Lincoln impersonator, an Abraham Lincoln impersonator. So all day he sits Put in a chair, puts on white face, he puts on a top hat, a frock coat, and sits in a chair all day and allows people uh, in the arcade to come in and, and shoot a cap gun at his head and he, he plays dead, um, reenacting that uh, thing that happened. Three card minded to playing Lincoln. Well, exactly. Well, he, he's a working man. You know, some men, you know, a lot of men they're not, content, you know, no job. They'll go out and they'll find a job and they'll honest work. And he's very hardworking. His brother, little brother Booth, desperately wants to learn how to throw the cards. Booth has a girlfriend, Grace, and he really wants to kind of impress his girlfriend and, and get things started or restarted with her. 
and he thinks that learning how to be a great card hustler is the way to a better life. Of course, Lincoln doesn't want to teach him how to do this horrible thing, this card thing. That's basically the play. No, the play is that, but it's also about. <laughs> oh. it's, it's also about their they, they, their vulnerabilities. It's also about right. that they explore what they knew, and one knew more about. I mean, about right. their mother. Right. You know. Right. It's also yeah. about you know having relationships with one of their girlfriends and, yeah. and all of that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah. It's. But in the end, it's about. Gosh, I mean. Brothers. It's about brothers. Talking. It's about family. It's about. Um, being yourself. You see, mm -hmm. Booth, um, Booth, his name is Booth. In the first scene, he tells us that he doesn't want to be called Booth anymore. Mm -hmm. He wants to be called Three Card. That's his new name. Three, three card. card. You know, Three Card Monty by Three Card. He imagines himself, you know, one day he will be this great card hustler and he will have this great name, Three Card, you know. Um, he wants to be someone other than who he is. Lincoln, uh, his old, older brother, has pushed the cards away. He, a great card hustler, he has rejected the cards, so he's not being himself. Um, this is really deep and weird. This doesn't go into, when I write the plays, I don't think about any of these things. You just think about what they're saying to each other. What they're saying, what they're doing on stage. One thing that says you know? leads you to another thing. All right, yeah. roll tape. Yeah. This is a scene from Top Dog Underdog. How are you going to get a woman if you don't got a phone? Women these days are more cautious, they're more, what do you call it, more circumspect. You go into a club looking like a fast daddy. You get a filly to give you her number on phone, and gone is the days that she just give you her number and don't ask for yours. Like a woman gonna call me. She don't want to call you. She just doing a preliminary survey of the property. Shit, Link, you don't know nothing. No more. <laughs> she gives you her number. She asks for yours. You give her your number, the phone number of your home. They're about telling her three things. One, you got a home. <laughs> you ain't no smooth talking, smooth dressing, homeless Joe. <laughs> Two, that you was in possession of a telephone and a working telephone number, which is to say that you got the cash and the wherewithal to acquire for your own self the world's most revolutionary communication apparatus, and you together enough to pay your bills. What's three? You give her your number, you telling her that it is cool to call if she should so please. That is, you ain't got no wife or no wife approximation on the premises. <laughs> Sounds like good advice to me. That's yeah. what I'm telling you. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's great. It's great. Because, you know, Booth is, is really a man of the world. He knows, he knows some he things knows that things. Lincoln doesn't he know. He knows things. Yeah, he knows things. Yeah. He, there, there, well, there's a lot of things he, he doesn't know, yeah. but he does know a few things. And yeah. when he comes up upon something he knows, he really works <laughs> it, you know? Oh, they do such a wonderful job, Moses and, and Jeffrey, really. Yeah. Now, I, Don Chill, who's one of my favorite actors. Yes. I mean, he's yes. been in traffic. He's been in so many great yes. movies, yes. right? Uh, says that this reminds him of your work, of mm -hmm. Athel Fugard's Blood Knot. Do you think oh. that's true or not? Did you know that? Oh, do, did I know the play? No, did you oh. know he had said that? Oh, um... Does it ring true to you? Oh, well, it's so funny. Um, I mean, it... He said mm, it's it, because it's a careful yeah, dissection yeah. of a brotherly yeah. relationship. Sure. I, get, I, mean, I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I... It's funny. Every for every seat in the house, there's a different take on this play, I think. And for or for every seat in the house, there's a different. This will remind someone of something, you know, else. Um, I mean, it. I have. I mean, I read Blood Knot so many years ago. I don't remember mm -hmm. exactly when I read. I'm a, I mean, I know the play, and I'm a fan of Athel Fugard's. But it's a dissection of brotherly relationships. But it's something. There's something else there's going on um, it's also a dissection of 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 the way we behave around each other and the layers of, of personality the layers of being that are required just to get through the day um, Lincoln putting on an outfit Lincoln playing Lincoln you know the character Lincoln playing Abraham Lincoln mm. uh, just to get through the day just to pay the rent the roles we pl play just to you know, make ends meet yeah so there's a lot going on, and it, um, it depends. I watch it so every night when I watch it, I come away with something different. You have yeah. said that part of what, somewhere, in some very yeah. basic and deep yeah. way, that you're writing plays to give African American men yeah. and women an opportunity to act on stage. Yeah, sure. That's that's. Um, I mean, you could say that's what this play is about at the deep. Yeah. kind of basic root. It's also about, um, because at the end of the play, the play is over, the lights come up, the actors take their bows, we applaud. 
um, you know, most of the time. And <laughs> it's about two African American men getting together and working together. You know, so most nights after watching the play, because I've seen it so many times now, that's what the play's about to me: the opportunity to give two black guys a chance to work together on stage. Yeah. Yeah, and represent, you know, represent. Something in a larger community. Yeah, you know, so when this play is done in, you know, maybe small theaters around the country, that's what will be happening all over the country. Two guys will get together and work together and work out stuff while they're working on the play. You know, it's very exciting. The only criticism I've read of you about you is that some say, as you know, yeah. you're writing stereotypical characters and they don't like that. Oh. You ever heard, have you ever read that? You know, you know people, what I mean? Yeah, well, because people, they want yeah, you to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It is this notion that, mm -hmm. you know, all those characters, yeah. Precard Monty and all that, sure. write about lawyers and doctors and right, right. blues right. players. And right. Well, blues music. Well, that could be blues awesome. Blues would be a stereotypical Well, well exactly. Right. Well, see, right. The, right. the thing is, it's tricky, you know. Um, I am not a writer who says, who sits down and says, I have a message yeah. and I'm going to shove it down the throat of the audience and I want them to leave the theater with su thinking such and such. I'm a writer who says, uh, who, you know, the character taps on my shoulder, pulls my ear and I say, oh, you want to be in a play? Okay, I'll write it. Um, Is that what so, happens? yeah, yeah. So sometimes they're three card Monty hustlers, sometimes they're homeless women, sometimes they're sideshow freaks. Um, but I, you know, people are funny. If I wrote about doctors and lawyers, the same people would probably say, oh, come on, girl, why can't you keep it real? Yeah, exactly. So I mean. I'm not out there to please people, the hundreds of thousands of millions of people in the world. You're out there to please who? I'm out there to write these plays for my characters who tap on my shoulder and say, hey, girl, put me in your play. That's who I want to please. And then you say to them, what are you about? Yeah. Who are you? Who are you and what do you want? Yeah. And what's your story? <laughs> yeah. And leave me alone. Yeah. I, got, and then, and then, I got these other characters over here. I'll get to you later. Right. So they you know, stand come in back line. later. Come back in a year or two. Well, Maybe I'm ready. In line. Sure, I there's a do. line. They, they yeah. wait get like planes on, a, on a line. runway. On a runway. They're yeah. waiting to take off. You know? <laughs> yes. So we're and they're we're saying, I'm bigger. I should be better. I've got more well, urgency. Put well, me ahead well, of the line. Well, then they, that's when they get But they get there, too, if they could prove you. to you. Sure. If they could say to you, listen, listen. Right. I, I, I can't wait. Don't right. put me at the back of the line. I want right. to be there now at the right. top. Listen. And it won't take too long. It won't take too long. Just that give me a Lincoln moment Booth. to tell you my story. That, that was, was Lincoln. Lincoln. We won't do it. Three Listen. days, girl. Come Three on, days. let's hit it. Hey, okay, fine. We can get it done. Right. You and I together. Right. I'll tell you. Right. You know? Yeah, and I, I listen to them. That's who I want to please. That's who I write for, those people. Um, thank Congratulations you. on the Pulitzer Prize. Thank you so very much. It's really thank nice. You. Thank you. <laughs> I squealed. We done? We did. This is Lauren Parks, Pulitzer Prize for Top Dog Underdog.